Anamik probably has a, a really good grasp on her body and, and how it responds to a lot of the work that she does. Good job, Anamik. You can do this. I guess it's kind of one of those things though, you need to push yourself beyond sometimes what you've done before just to really test what you can do. I'm surprised she doesn't get ill. The human body can stand so much. Her can stand a little bit more, huh? race championship what a moment the crowning moment of her career for Annemiek van Vluten I think she's one of the most competitive people I've ever come across but you can I can too eh? there's a reason why she's the world's best female bike rider first of all that this this team is actually a little bit different as other teams in, in Europe we do our training camp in uh, January and the base of the January camp is uh, especially distance hours hours on the bike but nothing uh, nothing intense intensity is coming late Anamik just arrived and the flight was delayed and lost the connection and so we had two options either driving and join the guys for the lunch break and then going from there or riding from here to the hotel and she decided to ride. And now I request myself to do this. <laughs> but to ride from here from the airport, like I hate to travel and then go on the bike is not my favorite thing. Yeah, Jean uh, came up last year with an awesome idea for me. Um, I really wanted to do Tour de Ronde last year, I was injured. And then he said like, ah, I have something else for you. And uh, so it was his idea to join the men's camp uh, last year. And he said like, we're really good, like just making kilometers, just easy, just easy pace. She needed something to grasp it you know, really hang on to. Now, at least it's a very efficient delay. <laughs> I just don't want to, I was like so devastated that I, like, I don't want to do less. <laughs> like it's on the program. Honestly, I thought it was going to be pretty easy. <laughs> the way it was sold was that it was just going to be nice, long kilometers, quite steady. One may fear that, you know, oh, a woman's coming and, you know, we got to, Make sure that we get we drop her and and when you get a group of guys together like that, you can say it's going to be easier than you like, but there's always going to be a bit of competition there. This is a man's team, and we don't want her to come in and get involved and this and that. No, but sometimes I was surprised. Like uh, when I looked back, she was still there, and I was like a little bit in trouble. <laughs> but it was just it was super easy. Um, it, it helps that she's a really nice person. The level across the board wasn't even also, so it, it was a lot harder than what was uh, meant to be. I was uh, thinking about all the posit positives, like oh, let's enjoy this day by, for my own, own speed. <laughs> but I was a bit nervous, yes, to join, because of, like, I, knew the, I know the difference between men and women is really big. Like, so usually, like, I have troubles already to follow classic guys or sprinters. Very classy, start your ride on the parking. Okay, ready to go. Oh, 10 o'clock, not bad, not bad. Annemiek is probably one of the most hardworking and passionate people I've ever met. I don't know any male rider committed like she is. I don't think anyone does team training camp, his own training camp, fly to team training camp again. We only see her a few times a year, but when we see her, she tells us what she's been up to and uh, some of the stuff she tells you is like, it's pretty crazy really. Work ethic and commitment to the sport 100% and she puts the sport probably above almost anything else in her life. I'm not sure if she trains as hard, but I think she trains as much and certainly more than me. Uh, from what I can see from her, she's, she's super strong. And like, for me, she's doing the smartest thing. The nature of the accident at the World Championships, it was, it was very serious, obviously, and, and the rehab was extreme. When you've got an athlete that's so goal-orientated, to then remove any sort of goals and say, could be three months, could be four, five, six months, might, might be a year, might never do you get back to that level. That, I think that's a really hard thing to, to take. So I remember thinking at the time, well, we just got to come up with something. Something that's, it had to be real, it had to be tangible that this is what we're looking for. Oh, this is what we're going for, this is a real goal here. But not so hard that it was going to be impossible to get to. Training with, with the guys is not like that world of, it's just different, right? And so she's exposing herself to a different stressor, which I always believe like, cha again, changes your perception. So 
it allows her to be that much stronger when her races get super hard. She's, she's faced that many times. It was always going to be borderline. I remember the, like a week before, she was saying, oh, I'm only doing this amount of kilometers. I was thinking, oh, geez, this is going to be a really big ask to do this camp. But I, at the time, I thought, well, we've got good people there. She can always do half a, half a ride and get in the car or miss a day here or there. The, the important thing was to get there, get out of Holland and the rehab stuff and just get back into a team setting. Today I had a nice ride by myself, but tomorrow I will be like in a lot of pain again. And uh, for sure I will think like, oh, what I'm doing here. But I know it makes me stronger and that's the driving force for me. New bike day. Good morning. Yes. So, because usually they have a pit stop and then I will catch up. Yeah, they catch up on the top. Yeah. 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 But they don't wait for me. But if I'm last year, it was a lot of time racing behind the cars, come back. We end up just riding harder and harder every day as well because nothing's planned, so it's like no expectations. On the really big days basically sunrise to sunset. The rhythm is very simple, like you get up, you go to the breakfast, you get on your bike. We just ride from A to B. Do a lot of kilometers and a lot more than probably any other World Tour team does on a training camp in the amount of days we have. Oh yeah, halfway we have lunch. Yeah. You finish the bike ride like eight hours later. Recovery time, 41 hours. I yeah, you take a shower, awesome. go to dinner. Awesome. Then go to bed. Yeah, this is special. You're, you're on the bike all day long. And I think, you know, when you're riding seven, eight hours, there's some more physiological changes and adaptations that take place in that. People sometimes ask me like, what are you doing all day? And like, yeah. yeah. The thing is you will not come back on the climb. But like yesterday, well, you know, when we were reaching yeah. the top, I was bringing you yeah. straight back. Yeah. I think today we will have to wait. Yeah, we sometimes also I catch up only with lunchtime. Yeah, it is what it is. It is how it is. So, but like take me so up behind the car then didn't make take so much time. I remember last uh, year, one day I was like riding eight hours by myself. No, it's eight hours total, seven hours by myself. And then yeah. like I arrived and they were literally just drinking the recovery drink. <laughs> it's an airplane. Probably the biggest risk is getting overtrained. Um, maybe just pushing yourself a little bit too far. I, d I don't know that she knows what the limit is. And that's that's a challenge for her. I've ran into a few with similar mentalities, but mentality and then the ability to, to do is two different things. She's at a level now where she's, her, what she's going after is massive. So I don't know at what point it, are we gonna reach the ceiling with her? Maybe we'll never. I think the challenge for her, the challenge for her, will be setting high enough goals. I, like I'm surprised she doesn't get ill or doesn't go downhill. Like you know, the human body can stand so much. Her can stand a little bit more. Huh? I think what you see is a combination of her natural physiological strengths, what she's been born with, coupled with an ability to meticulously plan both her training, her nutrition and her recovery, um, which allows her to train at a very high level whilst maintaining good physical health. Coupled with that, you have um, a, a great mental strength. She's working hard and she, she does the kilometers that she wants to do. Um, and tomorrow it's even harder for sometimes because sometimes she goes off the back when the, when the pace is hard on the climbs. And we'll stop for drinks and she'll just keep going and, uh, and we'll see her again maybe 20 k's later, still, still slugging along. All the time out of my comfort zone. So that's also the horrible thing of it. Like they really, I'm in pain all the time. I'm all the time not riding in the tempo or the speed I want to ride. Just to see enemy kind of jump on that kind of volume. I think it's certainly much, much higher than, than a lot of probably most women in the world would, would do in, in one go. Yeah, I probably thought she'd do 50 or 60% of the total workload. That would have been a success story in itself. To what she doing, 100%? Bit more maybe, I think. She got lost a couple of times and did more kilometers. That was, that was unbelievable. On every hill and every hell the hill that's coming up, I know that it will hurt yeah, more than I would like to. Um, she's clever, you know. She doesn't take any turns necessarily at the front on these camps, but there's no need for her to. She knows what she's doing to a certain extent, I think. And when she arrives at that point, she's got no hesitation in saying, no, that's enough, I'm stopping.
but it's a lot further down the track than most people would say, no, I'm going to stop here. So, and I think that's the difference. That's it. That's what makes a champion, the, the people who keep fighting and keep coming back. But in the end, it's also the key success for me on this, uh, this camp. I don't go too much. I don't go in the red. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's a tricky one. Um, maybe she has got there before I haven't told anyone about it, but it seems to be working so far. Hey, day two, I came home, like came back in the last 20k, I was like, I cannot finish. I was completely empty. Quaddy said like, yeah, it's about all empty the tank, this, this training camp. Like, nah, I think it's pretty, pretty empty. I never had a feeling like, I was not sure if I could finish. Today we're climbing Mount Etna and it's uh, shorter than the last few days we've been doing but uh, quite a bit more climbing. It's actually been hiding itself quite well considering on a relatively small island. We would have thought we'd been looking for it considering we've been spending like eight hours on our bike every day. She was, we were talking but she never revealed that stuff until after the camp. Uh, but I remember that day I was so smashed that I couldn't do anything and I remember like oh, okay I have to now like do something with my hair and some good makeup and to arrive at dinner like a little bit not looking looking super smashed otherwise they will say to me like no nah, you're not going to ride tomorrow. She was never going to tell me that otherwise I would have said no nah, we're just shutting it down get out of there. So she probably knew that that would be my reaction if I knew what was going on as well. I, I did my hair with my hair straightener and some makeup on and I went to the dinner and I sent like just a voice message home and there was, I have it still, I was crying. Yeah, in some ways it doesn't really surprise me <laughs> that she was doing that. Like, oh, this was such a bad plan and also sent something to Jean Bates like, hey, they're riding like five watts per kilogram body weight, which is really hard for me uphill here. Like he told me it would be easy. She wants to have a good image and, and for her to go to a, a camp setting like that and, and not do the work, I think would have, she would have felt bad, but also for the women's team in general. Saying, oh, okay, why would, we, why would the men's team invite women along to the camp again if, if all they're gonna do is cry and not get through the, the camp? That's not, we don't want that on board with us. I didn't allow myself like to, think about the next days. I just took it day by day and um, yeah, every day I could ride with them was, was good. Every hour I could ride with the guys was good for me and every hour that I did by myself also. She, she had that responsibility of, of herself but also she was carrying sort of women cycling as well with her at the camp. Last year we did all this training camp like seven eight hour days and then we all kept, went home and like one week I didn't do anything and in two days I checked Instagram and she was already in Taide or somewhere altitude like, it's like she doesn't go home, she just keeps training. Me and my coach always evaluate at the end of the season and I never won a spring race in eight years. So the last one I won was eight years ago. Last year I won my second race Strada Bianca uh, and that was after this camp and then I took a good rest and then I was really on another level. It will be a special year, year 2020 with uh, the Olympics in Tokyo. But the thing I most look forward to is like to ride and enjoy uh, every race in my World Championships uh, jersey in the rainbow stripes and show it.